I have uh, the pleasure of welcoming you to this prestigious World Intellectual Property Organization South Africa Summer School on IP and Technology Transfer, which is an annual event as many of you are aware of. We are so honored this year to be hosting the event at UKZN. The WIPO Summer School program is part of our work to promote a deeper and more informed understanding of the functioning of a modern and IP balanced system, which could be effectively used to encourage economic, social, and cultural development. The role of intellectual property, what is it about? Is it about making sure that some people uh, become rich and make a lot of money? Or is it about making sure that humanity can actually begin to reap the benefits of creativity? And how do you do that without discouraging those that are living in the age of creativity? As CIPC, one of our strategic goals is to contribute to a knowledge-based economy and competitive local industry by supporting and promoting local innovation and creativity. In order to promote foreign investment, it is important to improve business environments in which industrial properties such as patents and trademarks are properly protected. I'm quite pleased that in terms of uh, in, uh, trainees, we have over 100 trainees, which is quite uh, unprecedented. And we also have about um, more than 40 countries that are represented. So we've reached almost every part of the world. This goes to show the reach that the World Intellectual Property Organization has and the inroads that it is making in terms of creation of awareness in intellectual property and technology transfer. It comes from Caleb, Adilowo from uh, Northwest University. Don't you think that IP policy is meant to promote academic entrepreneurship and innovations in the system? Sure, the university owns the intellectual property, but because of that, and because of the IPR Act, we, we are required to commercialize that IP. So we will assist the academic to mature the IP, to find innovation funding, to find commercial partners to ultimately get um, it out there. So Benefit talks about the socioeconomic impact, job creation and so forth. So in, in terms of South Africa, our legis we are fortunate that our legislation does prescribe what should be deemed benefit and generally it's socioeconomic benefits. I am a strong believer that Africa can solve its own problems, that African solutions to African problems are far more effective than bringing in a European or American solution and then trying to fit it in, in the African context. Uh, the VC fund is, is a growing market actually in South Africa. Uh, we've got a university uh, technology fund that we've implemented with the SMME fund. Technology Acquisition Fund is also, and I call it a new fund. We, we're trying to expedite service delivery. A patent that just sits on the shelf is eventually worthless. So it's not just about the intellectual property, but it's also about the skill and the experience of the team that's only going to build a business around the IP. Efforts in the, in the field is hugely complicated uh, machines. So that's one of the main reasons that industry is so interested in this. His topic will be designs and their industrial applications. It is important for those who are going to use indigenous knowledge, who are not owners of the indigenous knowledge, but who are going to use that indigenous knowledge to acknowledge the source. So in acknowledging the source, you are more or less saying, well done to the communities that came up with this idea. And that becomes morally correct for all the parties to enjoy the benefit, even if it's not money. Copyright doesn't sterilize creativity. 
new music, new books, new novels are created all the time. Um, and there seems to be no end to human creativity. Culture in general um, is the one that identifies who we are as a people. And if we, if we look at how, for instance, America is managed to export its culture to the rest of the world, there are learnings to be, to, be, to be had from that experience. And how they've also managed to uh, create an environment where the people that are in the video game industry liaise with the people that are in the music industry, liaise with people that are in fashion, liaise. So that is the kind of uh, chain that we are beginning to see emerge in some countries. Um, because if we, if they don't go that route, then you are, ne you are never going to grow the cultural and creative industries. Whenever the AI that is created by a particular inventor has unintended consequences or it creates uh, intellectual property or any sort of uh, um, data that can be copyrightable for example that has nothing to do with what the inventor intended how is it that law can kind of reconcile this gap between what the inventor intended and what the artificial intelligence ended up doing in the end We're seeing bigger contracts coming our ways, bigger games being made, bigger revenues attached um, to those games. We're seeing more films um, being released from South Africa. We're seeing films being released on platforms like Netflix. We're seeing those films winning Oscars, like My Octopus Teacher. We need to be able to fund entrepreneurs for research uh, and development. in a fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory way. So you can make money, but you need to give other people a chance to do it as well. That's, that's it. Great discussions with our speakers.